Hello and welcome to Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omogwe. I am Taya Salam. Many thanks for joining us again. All right. right. We start off the show like this. Victor Ladikbo is out for the rest of the season. That's mm. after undergoing a surgery that will keep him out for the rest of the season. Not even the playoffs. And Miami Heat are in the playoffs already, but Victor mm. Ladikbo will not be part of that. He's been injured for a while. That's why he has not been playing. Yeah. But right now, he, had to, he will have to undergo a surgery that will ensure that he will not be available. Very, just like what he suffered the last time. Yeah, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Uh, same injury. Um, it's going to be out for a long time. Uh, as a matter of fact, the surgery will go ahead later today. It's a sad one for Victor Ladipo. When he sad. moved to Miami Heat, I mean, when he made his debut, remember how sensational it was. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't act as busy as he was coming into the team. He blended mm -hmm. so well. But right now, he will be out for the rest of the season. Yes. He will not be playing in the playoffs. And Miami Heat, they've made it to the playoffs. So Victor Ladipo will not be in the playoffs Very because sad. he'll be out for a long, long time. After mm -hmm. the surgery today, we'll know how long he will be out for. Exactly. But it's likely to be up to six months or there about because or more. The uh, last time, more. The last time almost the injury was year. out for a full calendar mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. uh, full season. So, uh, really it's just sad, full. sad, sad, mm -hmm. sad, sad all round. Uh, injuries are very tough uh, to deal, deal with. with. Uh, for a lot of those uh, pro athletes and uh, it's even tougher when you have to deal with the same injury, uh, you know. Uh, for a second time for Victor Ladipo, uh, moving to Miami. Uh, Miami uh, thought, okay, this is it now. We're going to go into the playoffs uh, with three uh, big options, joining Bama Debayo and Jimmy Butler. Uh, but unfortunately, um, he's had very little time on quarter because uh, of the injury. It's a very rare injury, uh, it must be said, uh, but requires uh, intensive uh, recovery. And um, like I said, the last time this happened mm -hmm. in 2020, I uh, missed uh, the uh, full calendar year. Didn't come back uh, for a long time. I uh, eventually came back. Um, Cecilia, I wasn't yeah. the same guy we saw mm -hmm. prior to yeah. the injury. Of course, uh, wasn't as explosive. Yeah, as, as it was, was you know, when he was uh, with India and then to Rockets. Yeah, and then, and then to, to the Rockets. I saw the struggles as well to yeah. the Rockets. And, and now yeah. the, the, the worst is being confirmed. Confirmed, so. Uh, uh, it's going to be out uh, for a long time after undergoing season end, ending surgery uh, later today uh, in New York. Well, it's not much we can say other than to wish uh, Victor Ladipo full, um, full, full recovery and a successful surgery. Exactly. That's all we can say. All right, let's talk about someone that has returned from injuries. The first time you've, you've had, we've never had James Harden out, out for, for a long, long time, this long. Yeah. But he's back, and he's back with a bang. As if he never left, uh, KD did it. And most of these top players, you ask yourself, what do they even eat? I mean, when they're out, you're thinking gradually they get into it. We saw how AD was able to get into it. Talking about Anthony Davis of the Lakers. Uh, he gradually got, grew into games. But James Harden left, and he returned. He had a double-double, as if he was just part of it. And questions have been asked. 18 games absence, you came into it scoring uh, those uh, remarkable numbers. Mm. How does he manage to do it? He yeah. had 26 minutes on court. Yeah, it's great mm -hmm. to see James Arden back. Uh, Cecilia, I know you're excited. This is your guy. <laughs> uh, the beard, uh, it's great to see him back on court. So you couldn't wait to talk about him. But we'll get back to James Arden <laughs> in a bit now. Uh, let's uh, show you uh, the results of the games that were played in the NBA last night and early this morning. Six, right. games, six, six games in total, seven mm -hmm. games in total, seven. including... Uh, uh, six, as a matter of fact, including the game featuring James Harden and uh, the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn. Let's start with the Wizards taking on the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. Ended 120 to 160 in favor of Atlanta. Trey on 33 points yeah. on the night. And the Hawks, by virtue of this win, have yeah, clinched the playoffs playoff sports for the first time since 2017. Great. So shout for out Trae to Young. John Collins, <laughs> Trey Young. Uh, uh, what's the other guy there? Um, Clint, Clint. Bella, all those other guys, uh, shout out to you. Yeah. Uh, but for the Wizards, Jim though, Collins. they're still 10th in the East, uh, which is good enough uh, for the for playing, playing yeah? uh, mm. tournament. So, yeah, it was always going to be hard for them to make the playoffs mm. because of how they started. Yeah, but they still mm. have got but a chance. Right now. They got a chance in the playoffs. Okay, because it's in the East. Yeah, yeah. they got a chance. It's There's in no the reason East, why yeah. they can't play themselves into the playoffs. Okay. okay. Let's can. go on to the mm. Nets and the Spurs. The Spurs lost 116 to 128 against Brooklyn. That's the game James Harden made his return from an 18 game absence. We'll come back to that game uh, shortly. The Celtics and the Cavs were also in action. And surprisingly, the Cavs won 
102 to 94. Kevin Love, 30 points on the night to end the Cavs' 11 game losing streak. The Pelicans were also eliminated from playoff contention after losing to the Dallas Mavericks 107 to 125. And um, it's quite unfortunate uh, for the Pelicans uh, because they had high hopes coming into the season with all the great young stars, uh, but mm -hmm. injuries have not been kind to yeah. them. Uh, last night, they played against the Mavericks without four starters. Lonzo Ball was missing, Zion was missing, missing. Brandon Ingram was missing, and Steven Adams was missing. And how do you win without your four it's starters? It's hard. So at the end of the day, they are yeah. out of the playoffs. So disappointing mm -hmm. end to the season. Uh, for New Orleans, but the, the the bright side to all of it for them is they're still so young mm -hmm. and uh, they yeah. can come back stronger next uh, season. The Blazers on fire. They won for the fifth time in a row after defeating the Utah Jazz. What's happening to the Jazz? You want the to Jazz, ask a question? they're relaxing. They, they, <laughs> I mean, they, they're good for the regular season already, so um, not a surprise. So Damian Lillard was the star of the show. 30 points, CJ McCollum 26 points for the Blazers, and that win moved them into a tie with Dallas for fifth, fifth in the Western Conference. Last but not the least, the Rockets and the Lakers. Fantastic game of basketball went down to the wire, but was the Lakers that prevailed 124-122 mm -hmm. without LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And even Dennis Schroeder and THT as usual had to come up big 23 points, 10 assists, and JJ won 20 points and 10 assists. Kai Kuzma also 19 and 10. Right. All right? Mm-hmm. The Lakers are trying to see if they can stay. They're just within a game of mm. sixth in the Western Conference. Mm. Okay, It'll the game I was eager to talk about, yes, James Harden is back. back. Uh, 18 games 18 off games, yeah. and 18 points when he got back yeah. and 11 assists. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy, what a player. It's good to see him back. Like I said, the longest uh, layoff of his career. Yeah. We've seen uh, a few of those this season already. LeBron out for the longest of his career. AD out for the longest in his career. I don't know uh, what's in this season. Uh, that is causing because that of what happened last season, I mean, right. the way and there was the yeah. break wasn't long enough, yeah. and most of these players played in the playoffs, so very, it's always as hard for them. It was yeah. always going to be like this, yeah. So very, not surprised quick, at all. very quick turnaround, you're right, Cecilia. Uh, but it's good to see James Harden back, uh, like I said, and uh, he looked uh, decent uh, 18 points and 11 assists. And the Brooklyn Nets uh, were victorious over the San Antonio Spurs. Kevin Durant, of course, played, uh, sending a shot mm -hmm. right there. Finished with 14 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists. Uh, but unfortunately, there was no Kyrie Irving. Uh, missed the game uh, with facial contusion, uh, which means the big three of KD, James <laughs> Arden, and Kyrie have only played seven games together. That's very worrying, Cecilia, going yeah. into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. It Rex, is. I mean, I don't even know what to say again because. Okay. Uh, All right. Why are you trying to gather yeah. your thoughts? Okay. Let's listen to James Arden. What is really? What made it so easy? for him coming back from that long layoff. Coming off the bench, not playing the first quarter, and having to stay warm and do all the things necessary to go out there and, and you know be my best. Um, and I just had to go out there and just play with confidence and do what I do do and not think about anything. And uh, it took me a little bit, but I really, I'm really good at this, this game. You know, I study the game, uh, very unselfish. Um, I take the game and, and I play it the right way every single night. So. Um, I don't try to do anything that I can't do or anything that doesn't benefit our team. And if that mindset right there keeps me um, in a really good place. I know I can score the basketball, um, but I take pride in, in getting guys involved and letting guys be involved in offense. And that way, defensively, we can all be locked in and it's just a lot easier, you know. And so I want everybody to, to, to you know, get their shots, you know, whether they roll to the rim or, or three-point catch and shoots or whatever the case may be. Yeah, not just playing for himself, playing for the team. Mm -hmm. And just getting into the game easily. That's what he does, basketball. All right, top yeah, performance players, there quickly. Quick, yeah, top mm -hmm. performance there. I was going to say players like James Harden, just, uh, they have a way of just slotting in uh, seamlessly, you know, for whatever reason. They're that good. Anyways, let's talk about the top performers, James. Uh, let's start with Damian Lillard for the Portland Trail Blazers, 30.2 rebounds and six assists uh, for the Blazers in their fifth straight win. Also making a short list for the first time this season is Kevin Love, 30.14 rebounds and three assists uh, for the Cavs as they ended an 11-game losing streak. Look at Doncic, of course, regular customer, 33, 8, and 8 for the Mavs in their own victory over the 
Let's move on to Russell Westbrook. Uh, five shots of another triple double would have been 183, uh, but he grabbed only five rebounds, but scored 34 points and dished out 15 assists. And last but not the least is the young star, Trey Young. Mm -hmm. 33 points, eight rebounds, and nine assists to help the Atlanta Rocks clinch a playoff spot for the first time in three years. Okay. And the good news is they are in it. And mm -hmm. so we'll see how, they can, how far they will they go, can go in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. All right. You can talk to us on our Twitter handle. Chelsea and Arsenal. Tell us about that game. Uh, for the first time in a long while, Arsenal doing the double mm. over Chelsea. The last time they did that was 2011 or thereabouts. can't remember. It's been a long time they were able to do the double over Chelsea. But this year, uh, Ateta defeated Lampard and Ateta also defeated Thomas Tuchel. So mm. whether baby coach or a bigger coach, Ateta seems to have the number. Maybe Chelsea, Balongo, tell us about that. Is it more like uh, a kind of a uh, secret? Maybe Ateta has revealed a secret on how to beat Chelsea to Pep Guardiola. I oh, hope Pep Guardiola watched that game lucky. because they, he got lucky. Get lucky. Is, yeah. that, is that some sort of secret or strategy? Get lucky. Um, depend so on, all you need to do is to put pressure on them when on, they are trying to have their back pass. Depend on which the, they are on not the, so on good at. mistake and uh, take advantage of that. <laughs> uh, it's no secret to it, but full credit to you. Of, uh, to uh, Nikola Teta for getting uh, all three points. Um, I don't know if that's enough to change the minds of Arsenal fans who want him out in the summer. The I fact guess, that they uh, beat Chelsea is something good. That's when you beat I, your rival, that's it's always saying, perhaps remarkable. That changes their mind. We'll get okay. to find out from about that when he joins us uh, later, later on, the on the show. So tell us about that, what you think. All right, we'll go to this one much later on the program. Let's quickly talk about what's happening with the Olympics, the cancellation. Mm. Mark Adams is saying that they're, they're not thinking about that at all. So they continue with planning, despite some athletes raising concerns. And, of course, the people of Japan raising concerns about the Olympics because of the second strains and the third strains of you know, the virus just happening across the world. But Japan will definitely go... Uh, the Tokyo Olympics will definitely go ahead in Japan. Let's listen to Mark Adams right now. With 70 odd days to go, we are really stuck in the implementation phase. We're not stuck. We are looking as things stand at the moment. And as we talk to our Japanese partners and friends, we are moving full ahead. Uh, there has been a small extension of the emergency situation, but we continue to plan for full games. And that's that's the way it has to be. And that's the only way it can be for us. Um, and. Everything is telling us from the test events to the international events that the games can go ahead and will go ahead. But we are fully, fully concentrated now in this last implementation phase of delivering uh, excellent games, which, which really will bring the world together, which really will mark a moment, I think, uh, and something that we're all looking forward to. There are a lot of sporting events going on around the world now, and I think this one will be the kind of the real tempole moment that will bring the world together. All right, so those who are thinking that it may just be cancer, it or not, because the IOC spokesperson has spoken. Mm. The Olympics will definitely go ahead. Mm. Yeah, um, there's, um, there's no finality to that. Uh, yeah. That's a fact. Uh, anything can still happen. Yeah. But the organizers and the IOC, they, they, they are they just, they're very serious about this mm -hmm. going yeah. ahead, and they're never thinking about any At cancellation. All. So, uh, despite um, all the doubts uh, mm -hmm. coming uh, from all corners, from athletes, uh, from Japanese, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the polls, every poll they do uh, is never in their favor. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, but okay. I, 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 I want it to go ahead as well, too. And I think it will go ahead. Uh, but fingers crossed, uh, you never know uh, what's going to happen in the next uh, uh, you know, a couple, couple of, of months, weeks. exactly. So, it's in July. So. Yeah, it's in July, so. July 23rd. It's you still have time, right? <laughs> Anything can happen. Anyways, uh, we'll be glad uh, uh, for this competition to go ahead. Finally, let's just get out of the way. Uh, it's not going to be the same Olympics. That's, of course, we know that's, that. Uh, that's uh, very obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be scaled down and, um, um, yeah, let's just, just do it. Celebrate let's just do it. Celebrate humanity yeah, and, uh, it. and just uh, let's move on afterwards, you know. Okay, moving on. Yeah, talking about moving on, let's talk about Team Nigeria in the U.S. at Texas, where they're trying to qualify for the relay. I mean, we have some events that took, took place, 100 meters, 200 meters. We have so many of those events. But tomorrow we'll dwell more about it. But this morning, we're talking about the missed relay. The missed relay team, 
they won the race in a time of uh, 3 minutes 18.27 seconds. And of course, because of that, they're now top 10 in the world. That's according to, you know, reports we're hearing from Texas. There's a good, the Mirror Yali, you know, gave us a report that uh, Team Niger are now in top 10 in the world. And the time they run, they finished top ahead of international athletics tiers and other international athletes that took part in it. Uh, so uh, uh, the time was three minutes, 18.53 seconds. That's the time they ran. And according to the story we're hearing now, this actually put them in top 10 in the world, which is like a remarkable one for Team Nigeria in the mixed relay. So other relays events will definitely continue for Team Nigeria as they try to qualify for relay events after missing out in Poland. These are some of the competitions that the ministry said they will be taking part in. That's patience of George, George, you know, they did the second one before. Uh, I think uh, Maobong actually started with it and patience of George followed for the other two guys. Uh, you know, finish the race for Team Nigeria. A good way to start. Mm -hmm. Because right now, the story we're hearing is that the African Championships in Georgia that's supposed to take place in June has been postponed. So that event is likely to hold after the Olympics. So when will all the athletes who have not qualified have a chance to really mm. qualify for the Olympics? Yes. It's going to be a tough one and a long Indeed. wait for some of these athletes. That's why this U.S. is really key. And of course, we have another coming up between AFN and MOC mm. trying to organize another invitation where athletes at home can also compete and get a chance to qualify for the Olympics. That's Nathaniel there taking... I'm trying to see locate uh, the <laughs> opponents that they're running against. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I think they ran alone. This, I think it's three, three according to the result here. You know, from three those in Texas, three participants. Yes, mm. Mm, I think they were just in the class of their own from the <laughs> videos that were sent to us from Texas on, at this morning. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> okay, Anyways, the um, PVAMU Invitational in Texas in Nigeria is uh, taking part. <laughs> of course, there are other athletes as well too. Um, in uh, in Texas, uh, just Jared Japar is. Uh, Joy, Joy Do Gabriel, Gabriel, you know, all these guys are, are trying to you know, take part in different competitions ahead of the uh, Olympics. Perhaps uh, they can still qualify uh, for Tokyo 2020, but it must be said that they are in a race against time uh, to do that. All right, then, so that's it um, for, for that. Uh, let's come back uh, and talk about the English uh, Premier League. Uh, where there was a big game yeah. in London yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, uh, this morning London is red uh, because Arsenal <laughs> yeah, beat Chelsea uh, by a lone goal. Confirmation of the I result. Emil Smith uh, rose scoring that goal after Jorginho uh, gave a horrible back pass to uh, keeper uh, Aritza Balaga and um, it was a horrible mix-up between uh, defender and keeper and Smith Road took full advantage uh, of it. It's the first victory or the first double over Chelsea uh, for the first time since the 2003 2004 season uh, by the Gunners. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to change the minds of uh, Arsenal fans uh, who want Mikel Ateta out in the summer. And uh, Arsenal fans, uh, like I said, you can talk to us on. Uh, channels on the underscore sports centers with tweets and uh, is this win enough to keep Mikel Arteta in the job for next season? Uh, we're not doing this, having this conversation alone, uh, but Akitile Johnson is going to join us now to help us uh, review uh, that game as well as preview the big, big matchup tonight between Liverpool and Manchester United. Celia Bada, good morning. Are you ready to join us? <laughs> yes, you are. How are you, okay. Bada? Good to have you on the show. Morning, Tayo. Morning, Cecilia. Always a pleasure to be here, like I like to say. Um, and it feels a little bit more special this morning, especially after Arsenal beat Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I love then. the you're smiling this morning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, Bada. Let's just, uh, let's just attack that one straight away. 1-0 one win. Uh, for the Gunners, uh, uh, not the most spectacular game, uh, not the most spectacular victory, not the most convincing. Uh, Arsenal got the goal early, and they managed to hold off Chelsea's, Chelsea's attempt uh, to equalize and perhaps uh, get a win. Uh, in that, your overall impression of Arsenal's performance? I thought um, Mikel Ateta made his intentions clear with the sort of team he selected 
played three central defenders from the start. Um, had uh, Mari, had Gabriel on the pitch for the first time um, since uh, both players started playing for Arsenal, since Ma- Mikel Ateta started handling um, Arsenal, to be fair. Mm. Um, had Drop Holding either on the other side of them. And then had the two fullbacks um, in some kind of confused situation where Saka was playing right wing back and he had three natural right wing backs on the bench. There was Chambers, mm. there was Bellerin, there was Suarez, all on the bench. Yet he went with a left winger on the right side of the fence. And on the other side, they had Kieran Tierney push up into midfield. Um, and the reason he did this was so that he could neutralize, particularly on Chelsea's right side, the runs of Rhys James, who caused um, uh, Mendy of Manchester City all kinds of nightmare um, over the weekend. There was a particular video that went viral where um, on the one occasion, one of the occasions he went past Mendy, Pep Guardiola had his hand, had his head in his hands. And, yeah, you I know, saw that. Just couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, I think Ateta was trying to curtail that um, whilst also having an extra body or extra bodies in central midfield to make sure that Chelsea didn't dominate the game. Um, what happened was uh, the two teams were sort of vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Arsenal playing an unfamiliar style. Um, Chelsea haven't gone through very, very difficult games against Real Madrid the previous midweek, against City um, yes. the following weekend and having a cup final to look forward to on Saturday. Uh, they had to make changes. Um, he made as many as seven changes uh, yeah. from Ostrukel. And then, um, of course, himself also had to make um, a few a few changes. Um, Obama Young started an attack. Emil smith came in um, as an extra body in midfield. And I thought, generally speaking, um, it wasn't the best of games. Um, there was not a lot to excite. Arsenal, mm. aside the goal, the lucky goal, um, mm. even though Arsenal players and the manager would have us believe that it was the press, that cost or forced the error. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, aside that, they, they, they didn't exactly create um, any more clear cut opportunities for the, for the 90 minutes. Same with Chelsea. In 90 minutes, Chelsea created just one uh, clear opportunity which Kai Havertz should have taken at mm-hmm. the beginning of the game. Um, so, I mean, it, it, didn't, it wasn't your typical Arsenal Chelsea bond stomach, uh, mm. but on the night, um, Arsenal frustrated Chelsea. Chelsea had a lot of the ball, had a lot of possession, but couldn't play through Arsenal. Arsenal had a lot of bodies in defence, had a lot of bodies, you know, uh, protecting the goal. Bernd Leno came up with a few in, uh, important stops in, in key moments. Um, mm, overall, it, it was a poor, it was a poor, poor London yeah. derby. But Arsenal won't care because um, it still keeps a mathematical chance of them making Europe alive. Mm-hmm. Um, what that <laughs> means is that they would have to win their remaining two games yeah. and hope that West Ham, Spurs, Liverpool, Everton, um, all of those teams sort of uh, drop points and not mm. win their own remaining games for them to stand a chance. Um, so I mean, it's, it's um, mathematics and, and permutation times for mm. Arsenal. For those who still care, to be honest, a lot of Arsenal fans can't be bothered anymore, mm-hmm. okay. especially after last Thursday when they about uh, of the, of the um, Europa League. But the, the chance still exists. They have two games that are winnable, winnable on paper. And uh, some of their direct rivals still have to play themselves. So um, starting with uh, Villa, Villa Everton today, um, earlier today. So, um, I mean, you see, if there's anything about this Premier League season that stands to the path, it's the unpredictability. Um, more than ever before, we've seen, you know, teams... Um, you know, go to um, places where they, they would typically not, not get results. Like Arsenal did yesterday. Um, you have, Like you said, they haven't won there in 10 years, haven't done the double in God knows how many years. But mm-hmm. they've done it. As abysmal as they have been, they've recorded a home and a, and a win win over Chelsea in the same season. And add on to that, the cup final win as well. So Ateta has beaten um, Chelsea in three consecutive games. Mm. Um, so... Maybe there's something he knows that, like, like Cecilia <laughs> said, that he should be telling his friend Pep Guardiola ahead of the Champions mm. League final. Mm. For you, um, but uh, just uh, just a straightforward uh, yes or no question. Arteta, is it the man for you going forward? Yes, um, he's done a lot of good things, but um, there are a lot of unpardonable things that he's done as well. But I think every man <laughs> deserves a second chance, especially seeing that um, this Arsenal. This Arsenal uh, setup, the, 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 the owners, uh, don't look to me like they're going to get a top-rated manager and then back him in the transfer market. Okay. Um, they're talking about making 150 to 200 million available yeah. to um, Ateta. I don't even think that this squad 
um, can be fixed with, with that sort of sum. It looks like they may need to spend more. So a top rated manager will come in and make demands. Ateta would accept what they give him and work with it. So um, I think, again, he's just 39. He's just 39. I'll, I'll hate to see him destroyed uh, on the back of, you know, some of the mistakes he's made this season. Um, Arsenal got as far as the semifinals. They could have gone as far as the finals of the European Cup, even though it's a Europa League. And um, they may still finish higher than they did last season, actually. So, I mean, there's no excusing the abysmal domestic form for Arsenal. But I believe Ateta deserves a second chance to write okay. his season. Let's talk about uh, Atletico Madrid right now. Barcelona had it. They couldn't take advantage of that. Uh, thinking Atletico Madrid will do them a favor. No, not really thinking. But right now, Atletico Madrid, they've, they have the trophy right now in their hands. Mm. Can they let it slip? Because Spain, it's been really tough this season. I think the only reason we're talking about it being tough is because of the responsibility of Atletico Madrid. At a point, the, their lead was in double figures. And for yeah. some reason, um, they just kept dropping points and dropping points and dropping points until Real Madrid and Barcelona came within touching distance. And with, with five games to go, Barcelona actually had the advantage because had they won their remaining games, uh, it didn't matter what Atletico Madrid did at that point, Barcelona right. would have been champions. But since then, Barcelona have lost to Granada, have mm -hmm. drawn to Levante. Yeah. Um, I, but that Barcelona, that Barcelona team doesn't look to me like they can win this season. Uh, maybe next season, but this season they don't have enough quality. Um, so, long and short of it is I expect Atletico Madrid haven't been handed the second chance um, to, to complete the job, to do the business, um, to, to, to nail the, the trophy for the second mm. time in, I think, six or seven seasons. Yeah. After that um, season when the likes, likes of Diego Godin and co led them to um, a trophy. Yeah. Um, and and for, for some reason, um, it would feel like Barcelona aided uh, this title challenge by <laughs> giving them Suarez, because Suarez is their top um, scorer. Yeah. He's, he's going to end up with He's going to end up with a league title that Barcelona hasn't won in like three seasons now or so. So, um, I, I, like I said, I fully expect Atletico to win. Um, they were dominant yesterday night against yeah. Sociedad. Uh, won and deserved to win. I, I expect okay. them to put on uh, or put up similar performances in the remaining games. And yeah. it wouldn't matter what Real Madrid or Barcelona do in their own games. Atletico Madrid should be, should be champions. Wow, so two more wins uh, for Atletico Madrid uh, to win their 11th uh, title. That's the Spanish La Liga title. Uh, fingers crossed that uh, we'll see about that. But uh, before we let you go, um, quickly, uh, let's talk about international football. Uh, the appointment of Hugo Bruce as a coach of South Africa. Of course, a disastrous AFCON uh, qualifiers. Uh, no South Africa in Cameroon next year. Um, and, of course, there's going to be a managerial change. And uh, Hugo Bruce has come out of the blue, pretty much. And the South Africans that I know find that appointments are very underwhelming. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, for the South African uh, national team that have had top-rated managers like Carlos Alberto Pereira manage mm -hmm. them at some point, you expect that they're doing better, to be honest. This guy is a journeyman, uh, at best, in my own opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I watch the PSA. I see the quality of managers there. He's South African. He's currently manager of Al Akli, the, the yeah. greatest club in, in Africa. Uh, yeah, so um, you look at even the young and up and coming ones, um, Benny Makati is with Amazulu. They are playing mm. some of the best football this season in the league. Um, mm. There is no immediate, apart from the World Cup qualifiers, why don't you just trust the local, trust the local backing, give him all the incentive that you're going to give this journeyman who uh, will come in, doesn't really alter your structure. They have a solid um, footballing structure. Yeah. All they need is just um, a manager who's handed enough time to build them a team. Thankfully, also, most of their players play at home. So, the South Africans just have their priorities a bit um, mixed up and messed up at this point in time. I don't think, even if they were going for a foreign manager, that is the kind of appointment they should be making. It's a very underwhelming one, like you said, and I'm dis disappointed with, uh, with their choice. Tough. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Bada, thank you very much uh, for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you can join us again uh, next week, Thursday. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, take some tweets before we look at the papers. I'm starting with Noble Flyer Man. He says, uh, boring game last night, but okay. Arsenal took three points, which is what matters. They exactly. should keep him. We will, we will, 
<laughs> will complete the words of Liverpool and they will walk alone back into uh, into the league next season and not Europe. When, uh, it's a crime to play three games in five days, to be honest. Yes, yes. it's criminal. We know that. It's mm. an impossible task. Mm. But we'll see what they can come up with tonight. Educase says that the loss to Arsenal was more of Chelsea's poor performance mm. than Arsenal's heroics. Chelsea still have their destiny in their hands. True. This is a wake-up call. Tuchel has taken responsibility, and we should expect a reaction on Saturday right. because they're playing uh, Leicester City they have to, in the yeah. FA Cup yeah. final. And yeah. I will be rooting for Kelechi Yenacho. Uh -huh. I didn't say any, any club, but just Kelechi Yenacho. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kelechi Whatever Kelechi club he's club. playing for, I'll Kelechi be rooting for him club. on Saturday. So see uh, Kizito Osage says, Ateta don't have what it takes to take Arsenal to the next level. Mm. Arsenal need a more matured mm. manager. Okay. He should be sacked. Wow. Osage. Very, very, very... That's harsh. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Well, that's his opinion. <laughs> um, we have also for Puma, um, uh, it's a sweet double win over Chelsea. Of course, uh, a message to other clubs were not to be written up because uh, <laughs> uh, the, gun has, uh, the gun is no man's friend. Um, <laughs> uh, we're time to get a championship slot. Championship? Is this really? a good idea? Think about you. Let's go to the championship. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I think when it means champ, come on, it's competing in Europe. That's what it meant. Please, <laughs> of course, I know. Well, come on, that's not going to make it to. Uh, to you. To, they might. They, okay. they might not. We'll see. Okay. Uh, Bosun says that even though it wasn't a good performance from Gunners going from Gunners going yeah. forward, Pep. Uh, props. props must be given to them for holding out and taking the three points. Yeah. Now there is still a slight glimmer of hope for European qualifications. True. Come on, you Gunners. True. Just um, continue. I'll fire your message mm -hmm. as well. So before we go to the papers, Man yeah. City should borrow the magic wand on how to beat Chelsea from Arteta and Arsenal ahead of the UEFA Champions League uh, final. While Manchester United will play their hearts out today to frustrate <laughs> Liverpool's top four Beat. We'll see about that later tonight. Let's take a look at the papers uh, before we go on the show, starting uh, with Sports in Life, the very interesting stories. Uh, Souls just talking about Maguire. Maguire is in a race to be fit for the UEFA Europa League uh, final. We'll see Manchester United fixture pile up a crime, uh, as according to Jorgen Klopp. Mm -hmm. Gunners nail blues at Stamford Bridge. Double victory for the Gunners over... Chelsea. Moses set for four million pounds. Chelsea exits. Interesting. Victor Sine is also in the news. Champions export almost done. Target's mm -hmm. 11th goal against Fiorentina. All right, let's go to Complete Sports quickly. And in Complete Sports, we have this one. Uh, Onoachu makes it 32 goals oh, in 36 league player. games. What a player. Onoachu is a what very a special season. type of striker. There's according to a former Belgian coach and mm. OJ is urging him to join EPL or a Bundesliga yeah, club. Yeah, I think that's his last okay. season in Belgium. Mm -hmm. the uh, I think so too. Osimhen will song. become Serie A top scorer next season. That's according to his agent. Uh -huh. And the NHL battles Vardy for Leicester City Award. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, I think he should, yeah, we should yeah. get that. There are seven Nigerians who have won English FA Cup. You have, uh, okay, Lichi Yenacha and Ndidi are in that class. Mm. See, they can do that on Saturday. Oh, and Tene Di Jove said Chikweze can succeed in England because mm. uh, Arsenal are actually interested in getting him. That's according to Complete Sports. The last one from you. Sporting son, uh, indeed, is top class player. We all know that. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we totally believe what Brendan Rodgers is talking uh, saying this morning, stop comparing him with Kante as well. Uh, Oneachu is a special player, incomparable as a current uh, former Belgian coach. McGregor edges out Ronaldo and Messi as the richest, highest paid athlete in the world. This is a fantastic achievement for Conor McGregor. He loves the Never money. Never would have thought a UFC uh, fighter would be the highest earning athlete in the world just five years six, seven years ago. But All the right. sports has come up in serious uh, great leaps and bounds uh, since that time. We need to leave the studio now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic holiday. I'm Cecilia Mongbe. Bye for now. I am Taya Salam. Join us again tomorrow.